Hello and welcome to Hygromatic. My name is Gebhard Markgraf and we are in the presentation room here at Hygromatic. And I would like to demonstrate the easy and fast maintenance of an electric heater steam humidifier from our heater compact line. Before we begin with the actual maintenance of the unit, we first need to make sure that the water is drained from the steam cylinder. To do that, I go on to the main switch here, press and hold position 2. You hear the pump is running, the water is entering the drain. Wait a bit. And now the point has come where all the water has drained from the unit. Next, I will disconnect the unit from the power supply and protect it against being restarted. The cover is mounted to the unit with three screws. I'm going to undo them now, and then I can just take off the cover. The unit is open, but before I go and carry out the maintenance, I would like to reassure myself that there is really no electric current anywhere, and I will check for voltage disconnection at all points of the main contactor. There is no voltage detected anywhere, then I can continue with the maintenance. First, I disconnect the system connector here, then I go up here to the so-called star knob screws, loosen them. And then I get to the steam hose adapter. On top of the steam hose adapter is a clip. The clip I can pull off. I will place the clip at a ready up here, because next I want to grab the steam hose adapter together with the steam hose and pull them up and out. And now I can use this clip again, clip it on there, and I have freed my hands for further proceedings. And then next down here, we have a little connecting hose. These units come standard with a super flush flushing device that we have installed. This super flush flushing device assists by enabling an increased discharge of mineral deposits during those times when the blowdown pump is active. After I've disconnected that hose too, I can dismantle the cylinder and lift it out. Now I have it unhooked and in my hands, and I can carry out the maintenance on the cylinder. After we have disassembled the steam cylinder, we want to open it to be able to clean it. To do so, you can simply take a screwdriver, a slotted screwdriver, with a bit larger tip, and just lever off the clamps. That's done relatively easy. And now I can pull apart both halves of the cylinder. And you can see here very nicely the heater element that is mounted on top here to the top part, the lower part with the strainer down there. And now for cleaning, I would first check how much deposit is on it. If there's a light coating of mineral deposits, I would try to go about it with a screwdriver. I use this shaft of a screwdriver. Knock around on the heater element a bit, not too hard, you don't want it to bend. And then small pieces of scale will chip off. In case none of that is very effective, then it would be sensible to immerse the whole thing in cleaning agents that have a certain acid content not above 10%. Then I can, when I have prepared such an acid bath, just place the whole cylinder inside so that the heating element is immersed in the bath. But please not the electrical connections up top, they couldn't take it. How long you need to allow for it to soak, of course, depends on the amount of deposit coating it, how thick the layer is, how strong the cleanser is. Well, you just have to experience it and play a little. That would be all concerning the cleansing of the heating element. Um, then we do, of course, still have the bottom part. This one has only had very few hours of operating time. Normally you would find a significantly larger amount of mineral deposits when using regular tap water, 
When that is the case, you can simply take a putty knife to it and just drag it along the plastic here. The steam cylinder can easily withstand it, no problem. And I would see to it that down here, in and around the strainer, all the openings are unclogged, because the water does need to go through there. Yes, and in fact, after all that has been done, I can reassemble the cylinder. I do, of course, have to replace the O-ring here in the flange area. To remove it, you can take a small slotted screwdriver and then pry up the O-ring and then pull it out. We have an O-ring set that we always recommend using during maintenance. In the O-ring set you will find the large O-ring for the cylinder flange and two other smaller O-rings. These we will use on top for the connection to the steam hose adapter and on the bottom for the connection to the base. Inserting them is quite simple. Here too, of course, the area where the O-ring is placed, properly clean of deposits, so it will then tightly seal later on. At this point we can reconnect them. As an orientation where upper and lower parts meet, there is this small joint and reinforcement. Please place these precisely above each other and they will fit together snugly. And by now we can put the clamps back on. They are actually just placed over this and then pressed down firmly. Now I've started with the one side, then I can go about to the opposite side so the cylinder won't come apart. Click like so, and by now I can actually place it on the table and can fasten it, clamp by clamp. Before I reinstall the cylinder, I do however have to check the base again and see if there are any mineral deposits. In my case there are as good as no deposits present. I can go about to the area where the O-ring will be placed later on. That part I will certainly clean again thoroughly because that can surely cause problems if there are any mineral deposits in there. Another item that should be taken into account during maintenance is this control cylinder. Inside the control cylinder we have a floating switch and the floating switch monitors the water level and informs at what level the water currently is within the steam cylinder. I'm going to open it up now and have a look at the floating switch. To do so, I can loosen the four screws on top here. That's what I'm going to do. And then I can just pull the floating switch up and out. The floating switch itself is made up of the following. The rod assembly has two floaters on it, which rise up when the water level is correspondingly high. Now I can go about this with some cloth, for example, cleaner, and see to it that I remove all mineral deposits carefully, because these floating switches, or rather these two floaters here, do have to be able to float up and down very freely. After I've done all the cleaning, I have achieved a good, bright, metallic, clean condition. I can then reconstruct everything. Up top here is a flat seal. I can readily reuse it. I just have to make sure that up top here in the area where the flat seal is placed, no mineral deposits are present so that a tight seal can be reestablished. I then fasten the four screws again. And with that, the inspection of the small control cylinder is complete. Now, after we have mounted the control cylinder, we can go about reassembling the steam cylinder. We have spoken about the O-ring set earlier, that we want to insert new O-rings in the top and bottom as well. That is something I will do here now. This one is the one for the base, the O-ring. Maybe wet it a bit, so it will fit in nicely later on. And at the top here, the second O-ring, insert it into the groove again, wet that a bit as well. And then I could actually place the steam cylinder back into the unit already. So, 
Make sure the cables are not being squashed. Down here, I do still have the connection for the super flush device. I need to give it a bit of a turn to fit. Then I'm going to fasten this first. And then at the top part, the steam hose adapter needs to be put back on. I do need to apply some pressure. Maybe even a slight rotational movement. And then that does go on quite well. Yes, don't forget the clip. I will reattach it on top. And bringing this to a close, we secure the whole adapter again with the star knob screws so that it does not waggle. I plug the system connector back in. And then I check again that no cables are being squashed anywhere, no hoses are squashed, or I notice any leakage already. That is not the case at this point. Now I would reconnect the unit to the power supply. In closing, I turn the unit on and let it run again for 5 to 10 minutes so I can find out if there is any leakage anywhere and see if the hoses are all tight and all the seals are sensibly lying in place. After this has all been done, to round things off, I put the cover back on. And please really do this because up here we have live components and no one should be able to touch that there. That was all for now.